Kleinfelter syndrome, named after Dr. Harry Kleinfelter, who first identified it, is a chromosomal problem where a person with an XY genotype, biologically a male, inherits at least one extra X chromosome, and sometimes a few extra ones. Having an extra X chromosome makes the testicular cells generate less testosterone, which is a hormone responsible for primary sex characteristics like development of the sex organs, as well as secondary sex characteristics like height and body shape. It's worth mentioning up front that we're using the term male here, rather than boy or man, to talk about the biological category of a person's sex, rather than a person's gender identity. Now, in puberty, in both male and females, the hypothalamus starts to release more gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which gets the pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. In males, these hormones affect the Leydig cells, as well as the Sertoli cells. The Leydig cells are in the interstitium of the testes, and in response to luteinizing hormone, they convert cholesterol into testosterone. The testosterone, along with follicle-stimulating hormone, then stimulates Sertoli cells in the seminiferous tubules of the testes to make more sperm. To maintain balance or homeostasis, testosterone reduces gonadotropin-releasing hormone and luteinizing hormone, and Sertoli cells release the hormone inhibin, which inhibits release of follicle-stimulating hormone. In Kleinfelter syndrome, this hormone balance is altered. That extra X chromosome interrupts the normal function of the Sertoli and Leydig cells. Starting at puberty and continuing throughout life, Sertoli and Leydig cells don't produce inhibin and testosterone respectively. This means that levels of luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone increase. Less testosterone also suppresses testes maturation and sperm production, as well as development of secondary male characteristics. In fact, each additional X chromosome increases the estrogen to testosterone ratio, making the changes even more striking. Kleinfelter syndrome develops when a gamete, either sperm or egg, contains at least one extra X chromosome. Typically, a gamete with 23 chromosomes, including one sex chromosome, either X or Y, develops when parent germ cells undergo the process of meiosis. Early on in meiosis, the germ cell makes a copy of all of its chromosomes, with each chromosome having sister chromatids at that point. During the first cellular division, called meiosis 1, the chromosomal pairs are separated. In the second cellular division, called meiosis II, the sister chromatids of a given chromosome are separated. In Kleinfelter syndrome, the sex chromosome pairs, which is either XX or XY, don't separate in meiosis I in the male or female germ cell. And this results in two gametes with a pair of X chromosomes and two gametes without X chromosomes. The other option is the sister chromatids of the X chromosome don't separate in meiosis II in the female germ cell. And this results in one gamete with a pair of X chromosomes, one without any, and potentially two normal gametes. Either way, the separation doesn't happen and the end result is a gamete with an extra X chromosome. After fertilization, a male embryo would then have 47 chromosomes instead of the standard 46. Additional failures for sex chromosomes to separate can happen during mitosis in germ cells before they give rise to the gametes. If failure also happens during meiosis in these germ cells as they give rise to gametes, other XXXXY, XXXY, and XXYY genotypes that also lead to Kleinfelter syndrome can result, including the rare situation where there's an additional Y chromosome. Symptoms of Kleinfelter syndrome are most apparent around the time of puberty, because that's when the reduced testosterone levels are most evident. They typically have hypogonadism, or small testicles and a small penis, and are often considered sterile, in other words, unable to have children. Physically, they're typically tall with long legs, a short torso, broad hips, and gynecomastia, or development of breast tissue. They usually have less muscle mass, less facial and body hair, weaker bones, and lower energy levels. There's also an increased risk of diseases that are more common among women like breast cancer and osteoporosis. Finally, although most boys with Kleinfelter syndrome grow up to live as men, 
Some develop atypical gender identities and some develop female gender identities. Klinefelter syndrome is diagnosed with a karyotype which visualizes each chromosome, including the X, Y, and extra X chromosomes. A karyotype can be done before birth with an amniocentesis or at any time after birth with a blood test. Blood tests after puberty can also indicate Klinefelter syndrome because there are low levels of testosterone and high levels of luteinizing and follicle stimulating hormones. Treatment is focused on replacing testosterone through hormone therapy, and infertility treatments can make reproduction possible in some cases as well. Alright, as a quick recap, Klinefelter syndrome is a genetic abnormality in which at least